Have you ever noticed how facts always seem to change people's minds? Yeah, me neither. Science educators and communicators often operate under what's called the information deficit model, which suggests that if people don't accept science, it's because they don't have enough information. The solution then is to give them more information. We know now that this model is flawed. We're not just empty vessels that you can fill with more information. We each come to the table with our own set of beliefs and expectations and biases and assumptions that influence how we interpret new information. Philosopher Willard Van Roman Quine proposed a different way to help us understand how we make sense of new information called the web of beliefs. At the center of the web are our most important beliefs, the ones that are most resistant to change. Things like our core values or fundamental understanding of how the world works. But all of our beliefs are interconnected in some way. If new information doesn't fit in our web, it's likely to be rejected. And you can't just pluck out a belief and replace it with something else because it affects the entire web. We often prefer a coherent web, even if it has inaccuracies, to one that has gaps or inconsistencies. Back to science. We fall for science-based misinformation like pseudoscience and science denial, because that information doesn't fit with our existing web of beliefs. So the next time you're explaining science, recognize that what someone already believes might be interfering with how they understand and interpret the new information. Building more accurate webs isn't just about more information. It's about thinking critically about that information and about our existing beliefs and thought processes.